Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig, a matter of Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and we're here in early May chasing pre-spawn smallmouth. We love the month of May, actually April, May, and June around here. Fantastic smallmouth fishing, great chance of some big fish. And we're here today with uh, our kind of newest guy, Josh Trammelsford, uh, tr just Trammel? Josh Trammel. And we couldn't be more excited, uh, we're gonna float uh, this river here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, of course, we're sworn to secrecy, but uh, the big question of the day is, are we going with, with the green mirror lenses or are we going sunrise silver? And uh, I'm going sunrise silver, but we'll carry these with us just in case. I'll keep you updated throughout the day if I decide to change glasses. I know you'll all be sitting on the edge of your seats, okay? How you doing, Brian? Doing great. Yeah. You feeling good? Yeah, I'm super excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, just uh, really cool to get out with Trammelsburg, B, Trammels B. Tra I don't know. Well, I don't know what his name is. So we're feeling good and we're looking better. <laughs> feeling good and I'm looking better. Love it. Oh, this is going to be fun. Some cigarette butts laying around and cement blocks and uh, I see. Can you look over your right shoulder? Did you hear that? For sure there was some sort of bird. Oh yeah. Nice. Nice little smolly. Got it. To start. Yes, sir. Got that heron. All right. I'm warmed up now. Mm-hmm. Bring that one in, we'll go down below this stuff. It's pretty shallow in here. I think there's one laying over there though. You wanna give it a go? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, fly fishing 
to me, it's a lot like going to the county fair. And instead of getting a greasy chicken leg, chicken leg <laughs> I mean, it's more like the soft pretzel with some gray poupon. Ooh. You know, I something like that. that doesn't doesn't really tear up your digestive system. Mm -hmm. You don't feel overly guilty. You don't feel like you ruined your dinner. So that's what, to me, what fly fishing is really all about. I got me a, a sheet club sandwich, man. Never been to sheets. <laughs> Man, now I know why. Uh, so, yeah, the bug we're throwing right there. It's a modified game changer. Um, I'm probably about to switch over to a swimming jimmy, though. <clears throat> but I, I don't see why if, you know, if smallmouth are not eating poppers, then you're going to be throwing a streamer, a bait fish. Yeah, either that or a crayfish. Yeah, but and if you're not, you know, I don't see why you would throw anything other than a game changer. It's got to be the world's best smallmouth fly. And I know a lot of folks get all up in arms because I, I don't talk about clouds or minnows very much. And, and there's nothing wrong with a clouds or minnow. It's certainly a fantastic fly. But to be honest with you, when you compare it to Number one, when you compare it to a game changer or a swimming jimmy, um, it just doesn't do what those flies do in the water. You agree? Mm-hmm. And it's then, honestly more fun to fish too. Oh, there's no question. More visual. And then the other the other thing is, I'm almost always fishing with a sinking line, um, and I prefer unweighted flies with a sinking line, sink tip, or an intermediate line. And uh, these fun, to me, it's just more fun. Nothing wrong with the Clouser, one of the world's best smallmouth flies. So we got a little sidetracked, and I have to be quiet, but we've got a mess of carp in the, kind of this little back eddy here. And best we can determine is they're feeding on seeds, and they're literally coming up, their snoots are coming out of the water. That's a word, snoot. Uh, their snoots are coming out of the water, and they're eating seeds on the surface. So. Uh, we've had a couple shots already, but we're going to change flies. And uh, Josh is putting on the Trammelsburg Carpenter Special Edition. The uh, fly was just invented not too long ago, and uh, you know we're going to we're going to give it heck. Yep. Oh man, Josh, you should have invented that fly years ago. Why did you wait until just this year? Coming up. Going down. Going down. Oh, sorry. Coming at it. Down. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Man, we got a thick boy with two C's here. Was that right? Yeah, okay. There we go. That's what was, uh, that's what was that's what was snooting back there. They got pretty miles, don't they? they got, you got a pretty mile. Want to do the underwater stuff?
So, perfect. Yep, that's perfect. Well, of course we came smallmouth fishing, but we came uh, across a pot of carp that were uh, sipping on the surface. And I mean, what's a guy to do? Yeah, carpe ding dong. Or is that right? I think so. Sounds, sounds right. I think that's Latin, right? Ding dong. Yeah. Ding dong. <laughs> so yeah, we, we uh, you know, we fished for it for a little while. Finally, kind of got it dialed in, uh, tied on the right fly, and next thing you know, ding dong. I knew he was there too, on this side of that log. How, how could you go wrong with that cast? That was a great cast too. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That is <clears throat> target species. Sure. Target species. Yeah, poop. Oh. oh, poop on the Yeti. Nice. <clears throat> you know, I think I say this about every day that I go fishing, that this is my favorite thing to do. And that's not bad. You can, huh? every day can be your favorite. Oh, yeah. You know? But there is something really special, something really Midwestern, something really American. It's America. Was that Flip Palette? Sounded like it. Didn't it? It sounded like Flip. Flip? Flip. Yeah, something very American about catching smallmouth bass with a family of Canada geese right behind you. Clearly American. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. I was just about to say, there's no way we can go through water like that and not catch a fish. So I didn't have to say it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, little. 
This is starting to be fun. about at 19, just a hair under. Yep. That's a stud. Splish splash. Man, despite, I was taking a bath. Despite all the fish we're catching, I'm, st I'm still having fun. Just got to come in. Mm -hmm. Even the small ones are a lot of fun. <laughs> Dropped him on the oar there. Okay, one of the things about casting from a boat, and uh, Josh and I just agreed, we'll, we'll do a future episode coming up sometime this season on <clears throat> you know the basic fundamentals of casting mm -hmm. from a boat. But I, I think one of the things I wanted to point out today is if, if you're a right-handed caster and you're fishing to the left-hand bank, it's no problem. It's your standard fly cast that you're used to making but you're not always going to be fishing to that bank. So um, instead of making an overhead cast, which puts your uh, guide in danger and maybe your fishing partner in danger, you're going to have to learn to cast over your opposite shoulder. Okay. And it's really, the cast is no different. Everything stays the same. It's, you're still pointing with your thumb. Okay, it's just that instead of going over this shoulder, you're just coming over this shoulder. You're, you, whoop, there was a fish. <laughs> <laughs> so Figured that would happen. Everything stays the same. You're just pointing the cast over this shoulder. I'm still hauling. Um, I'm, I'm doing everything the same. I start low, I get it moving, just come over this shoulder, drop the rod tip back a little bit, and then come forward and point with your thumb just as you normally would. Uh, what a lot of people try to do is they try to twist their hand around and, and try to open up their hand as if they were casting uh, this way. And that's just not the case. So, and you can actually practice this in your backyard. Just stand in one spot and cast hard to your left and then stand in that same spot and cast hard to your right over that opposite shoulder, in this case would be my left shoulder. So start low, get it moving, stop, drop your rod tip back, and I'm hauling, of course, as I do on virtually every fly cast that I ever make. The other thing about fishing with these sink tip and intermediate lines, I, I know I've said this so many times, but it's so critical, is that you've got to keep the rod tip at or even in the water. So many times during the course of the day today, my rod tip has been in the water, okay? You're just gonna get so much better retrieve, the line's gonna sink better, and uh, you have much more feel uh, for when the fish hits. If you don't have your rod tip in the water, it's not as straight a line. You'll see I've got that, that belly there. You don't strip the fly as well. The line comes up and slaps the water. You could be letting the fish know that you're there doing that and you just don't have as straight a line. In this style of fishing, it's always best to have as straight a line as you can between your rod tip and the fly. So practice casting over your opposite shoulder and you'll be a better boat angler.
What's that? Hey, that's 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 just fun. Huge. Yeah, it's it was uh he was big for his size. <laughs> just <laughs> left the door wide. Well, Josh, Josh Trammell. Sorry about the name thing. I got it now. It's Trammell. <laughs> Not Trammellsburg, Trammells B, Trammells mm -hmm. Steen. Just Trammell. Just, just Trammell without anything else. Yep. Plain and simple. Well, thanks, man. That was a really fun day. Um, Smallmouth fishing in Ohio. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a real thing. I mean, I don't know how many fish we caught today. A lot. Mm -hmm. um, including a couple big ones. Of course, I missed a couple big ones, too. We won't, always we case, won't talk about that too much. No. But as always, on a guide trip, uh, I learned some stuff today. Um, and I would say that one of the things, most of the day, uh, I was fishing with an eight weight rod and a scientific anglers. I'm assuming the scientific anglers. Yep. It's uh, the, the tropical clear tip line. Tropical clear tip. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an intermediate, an intermediate sink tip. And I think it's what, 15 foot? I think it's 15 foot. Roughly, yeah. I, I don't know for I think, sure. I think it is. We'll put a link, of course, down in the description. Um, and of course, a short leader, four to five foot leader. Mm -hmm. But you know, I've uh, I've never been a huge fan of intermediate lines for that much. Um, but I saw it today. I learned it. I lived it. I fished it today. Whereas my um, my airflows, my streamer maxes would have been way too much mm -hmm. for a lot of the slow moving water that we were fishing today. Um, and of course, we're fishing mostly unweighted flies. We fished the game changer, chartreuse and white game changer, which. Uh, you've done some modifications too, which is kind of the whole idea behind those. Uh, we switched off to a couple of others. Of course, I wanted to fish the swim and Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> but another thing that I, I have learned over the years is when you're fishing with a guide, always listen to the guide. And you said, mm, let's stick with the chartreuse and white, mm -hmm. and we did. We went off of it for a little while not so much happened then we came back and started banging fish so mm -hmm. chartreuse and white chartreuse and white chartreuse and white yep that's the way to go uh, we also did some top water stuff with uh through a popper for a little bit and then the umqua swimming frog maybe still a little bit early for that mm -hmm. in the season and a little bit early in the day that was midday when we tried that so um but uh as usual it was just a, a ton of fun um and then the other thing that we both agreed on, and you had never heard this phrase before, uh, was the pause is the cause. And you know, when I, back in the days when I was guiding largemouth a lot, I would always say that when you're fishing a popper or that umpqua swimming frog, uh, a swimming jimmy, the game changers, you strip and then it's the pause mm -hmm. that really, really gets the fish to hit. Now it's not always the case, not necessarily with trout, mm -hmm. um, but with these warm water fish, you know, the, the movement of the bug gets the bass's attention. And then they come over and look and the rubber legs on that popper or the, the rubber legs on that frog or a game changer's is kind of hovering or swimming Jimmy's doing its, its thing it does. It floats back up to the surface. Um, the pause is the cause, and that's uh, with these flies that are well designed, they're moving as much on the pause as they are on the strip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure. so that's going to be our new t shirts. And uh, of course, we got some sort of drilling for oil going on behind us, as always. So, uh, good time to wrap it up. Let's uh, we're going to head back to uh, the home base of Mad River Outfitters and Ohio Fly Fishing Guides. And uh, thanks again. You can learn more about Josh Trammell, Josh McQueen, and all of the guides at Ohio Fly Fishing Guides at OhioFlyFishingGuides.com. And as always, we appreciate you watching. Be sure to subscribe and tell them to watch these videos. This one and this one. Watch, watch those them. videos also because we think they're all great. So thanks as always.